So my name is Nayel and uh, I, I represent Hazar Ventures, which is the first seed fund in Azerbaijan. We invested in up to 10 startups in Azerbaijan, like in different fields. And uh, we are, I would say, like the largest ecosystem builders in the country. Uh, we uh, make like majority of events. Uh, we are usually the first contact point when it comes to technology and innovation in, in Azerbaijan. Uh, and, um, we also kind of connect now yeah, with several uh, tech ecosystems in the world and trying to interconnect in terms of like exchange of knowledge and, 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 and uh, uh, yeah, experience in that field. So uh, I'll go on to the next slide. As you can see, you will see like the top uh, startup ecosystems in the world. And obviously Baku is not there, unfortunately. Uh, as you can see, like uh, there are uh, many spots in in the U.S. Like in, on the West Coast and East Coast, uh, in the West Coast, like uh, the most famous one is Silicon Valley, obviously. On the West Coast, uh, uh, on the East Coast, it's uh, Boston and New York. Uh, and in in Europe, uh, actually Berlin is uh, one of the uh, the biggest ecosystems in in Europe. And and uh, uh, the, the biggest ecosystem is obviously London because it's got more resources in terms of uh, like funding, uh, talent, and uh, environment as well. Uh, but Berlin, I think uh, Berlin is a bit far behind, but uh, but I think it, it will do a good job in order uh, to boost uh, and uh, make it less like uh, obvious uh, like the progress in terms of the ecosystem. Uh, definitely, one of the best ecosystems is Israel. Is in Israel in Tel Aviv. Uh, I would say that in the, in the in the latest report they were like I think third or second after Silicon Valley uh, or like or London uh, and uh, uh, the reason is that uh, there are so many like there is so much talent uh, money uh, and access to many resources for Israeli startups and uh, uh, they basically uh, send their startups straight away to the US because their market itself is, is very small and not scalable. They have population of I think maybe 5 million or something like that. And But uh, uh, their competitive advantage is that like once their startups are established, they are not seeking to invest in, in Israel uh, or, or somewhere even like regional. They go straight uh, to the biggest ecosystems be it Berlin, uh, Silicon Valley, London or any others. And there are many cases like that Israel does not have many unicorns, which means uh, one billion plus uh, startups, but it has put like many, many hundred million plus startups. Uh, and uh, I actually would like to point that we would like to get the experience of Israel because we are not a big country either, and uh, uh, we have a population of about 10 million, and uh, our market is not scalable. Uh, the, the, the bad points, uh, I'll, I'll go on to the bad points, but uh, if, we, if we turn Baku at least to regional tech hub in terms of like we have an access to Eastern European markets, we have an access to Turkish speaking markets, Central Asia and Middle East, we can be like Baku is a nice city to be for potential tech talent and investments. Uh, I'll tell you more about, I'm not sure about if. Uh, anyone has got, like good knowledge in terms of uh, the startups, what is startup and what they're doing. So shortly, I will say that startup is any kind of uh, business, uh, mostly in technology and internet, that, uh, that do not know uh, uh, like uh, their business model and how they are going to make money, uh, but they have a potential to earn millions and billions of dollars uh, in in a very short period of time. So. The example could be from Google to Facebook, Uber, and many others. Uh, what is important in startups? Like, why, uh, if you, if a startup wants to uh, scale very big, like, and and very fast, they need to uh, uh, they need to have like uh, some some criteria, and uh, it is very difficult for startups to do that without investments and necessary resources. Uh, and actually investors provide these resources. That's why Silicon Valley could be the, the biggest and, and the most successful ecosystem in the world. 
Uh, and what, what are the investors are looking for in, 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 in startups? So the first big point is team. Uh, how, the, how their relationships are, if they can execute uh, their ideas uh, and products and uh, scale, uh, if they have the relevant experience in that uh, industry, and many others. And then comes the other things, but the, the most important thing is the team. And if you are a single founder uh, starting your business, like the probability that you will fail is very high. So maybe 90% or something like that. Uh, yeah. Then other things are product. Uh, it's important to have a good product in terms of like, uh, maybe you have a bad idea, maybe you have, you have a, a, a bad product but good teams, but then it's, it still might not make sense to like, you know, to scale in that sense. And uh, obviously business model is important, but sometimes, for example, if we, if we have an example of Google or uh, Facebook, they have not been earning money straight away. Uh, Facebook started earning money, I think, maybe on their third year or something like that. So uh, it is important, the, the most important thing is, first of all, is the growth of the startup, uh, that how they can uh, fastly uh, like get to the new markets and get new uh, users, and, then, uh, and, then, and then, then the business model and execution, obviously. And, and one important point is that for investors, if you need to get money, recommendations is a, is a, is a big bonus. So if you know an investor uh, who could in, uh, like enter you to other investors, then you know, uh, you are obviously having a very good competitive advantage. So I'm going to talk about like positive things about our ecosystem and then I'm going to talk about bad things. So the shiny thing is that like Azerbaijani people, especially edu educated people would speak four languages. So it would be English, Russian, Turkish and uh, obviously Azerbaijani. Uh, this is a very good point in terms of getting uh, to new markets and uh, like uh, uh, scaling in, in the new markets. Uh, as I said, like it could be a hub uh, for Turkish and Russian speaking uh, uh, countries because like, uh, let's say if uh, uh, one company in Russia would like to get to Turkish market, it could be very easy to do that through Baku. Uh, there are many, many cases of Azerbaijanis who live uh, uh, and work abroad and they are super successful uh, in, in different fields and in, in startups as well. Uh, I've got a friend who basically uh, 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 who sold his startup in, to Twitter in, in California. Uh, there are uh, there, there is a friend who lives in London and he um, basically got very good investments from different uh, investors and um, many cases like that. Uh, like I would say also like the richest people of Russia and Turkey are Azerbaijanis as well. Uh, and in that sense, uh, if we kind of get uh, this community together, then we could do uh, lots of good things uh, for the bet better of the country. Uh, I believe that uh, we have entrepreneurial cu culture. We don't have too much tech talent, but uh, I believe our people uh, are very entrepreneurial to start their businesses and, and move on with that. Uh, I think we, from the Soviet time, we have like uh, knowledge of uh, strong math, and uh, in that sense, that that's why I think like uh, I think Azerbaijan is one of the best teams in terms of the chess still, and uh, I think in that uh, after our uh, independence, uh, we kind of lost that a bit uh, because uh, the government was not paying too much attention for technical fields, and people started uh, like. Uh, uh, getting more like into social sciences, whatever, which is which I believe is a very long, wrong policy. Uh, but I believe that the government would like to support this field and would like to uh, uh, you know, to help like uh, startups and entrepreneurs in the country and maybe even abroad. But they don't know how to do that. Uh, and uh, I would say that the recent crisis that we had in Azerbaijan, the devaluation of the currency and uh, uh, the, the fall of the cost of oil uh, is a positive thing for us because we don't, <laughs> we don't have uh, easy access to, the, to, the, like, uh, to money because like, I think uh, uh, people will start to work harder because they will believe that, like, I believe that the, our government said, okay, we've got money and we can do whatever we want. So they started building all these buildings and which have no value as such uh, 
only like you know buildings and that's it. The the bad things uh, is that we don't have uh, any accelerator program or VC or anything that could be like you know big investment round that would be uh, bring big investment rounds for our local startups. Uh, that's uh, that's because we don't have any success case out of Azerbaijan yet. And there are so many reasons that why we don't have success cases. But I believe we can we can create one. Um, as I said, like uh, our market is not scalable. For example, uh, we can say that there were some exits in Turkey, like uh, and um, uh, recently Delivery Hero, which is a German uh, company, acquired the MX Equity for 600 million US dollars and. Uh, this this was the biggest exit for Turkey, but Turkey has got that because they have huge market, like 80 million, almost 80, 80 million people uh, population, and uh, many other resources. And Azerbaijan does not have that. Uh, it, it was for that matter, I think we should not. If startups start in Azerbaijan, they should not consider Azerbaijan a market because it's it's very very small. Uh, uh, unfortunately, we don't have any legislation in terms of. Uh, startups or uh, investments or anything related to that. Uh, in, in general, our legislation is very poor. Uh, sometimes, like I've heard that people say that, you know, we've got like good legal system, but it, it just doesn't work. But I believe it's not, it's not working that way. If you have good legal system, then, you know, it should work. Uh, the, uh, yeah, as I mentioned, we have wrong policy in terms of uh, uh, developing this field. Uh, the government does not understand how to develop that, and uh, uh, I'm not sure if they want to understand it. But uh, but uh, they, they are trying at least. Like uh, let's see, uh, we don't have much t much talent, tech talent in the country, unfortunately. Uh, as I said, like you know, previously, uh, we had that you know, during Soviet time. But in the 90s, after the war. Uh, there was like huge brain drain, uh, like we, bled, uh, we, we had many people who left Azerbaijan and uh, we had lost uh, intellectual potential of the country in that time. Uh, yeah, I think there are some like uh, some good startups that I believe uh, can basically scale in internationally uh, and we are trying to help them out to do that. There is uh, Flappos, which is task forwarding app uh, uh, which means, for example, if, uh, say, your friend or uh, your mother or whatever uh, tells you to bring milk or something, uh, like beer, whatever, uh, you can, you can uh, 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 basically task forward that to your friend and then it will work like WhatsApp, basically, but more related to tasks. And you can't create your own tasks, which is, in, in that sense, I believe it's, it's a unique app. Uh, BestClip is basically a cloud synchronization app, so uh, for clipboards. So, uh, like, uh, imagine a Dropbox basically for clipboards. Drony is a, a drone uh, a platform, so uh, they create both drones and they have also drone kit or, like, let's say, app store for drones, <coughs> where other developers can have their own apps and uh, could do with the drones whatever they want, basically. Uh, and there is also, th these startups are also in, a, in our portfolio, Medex and Kinotep. Medex is a medical application uh, startup, so you can basically ask uh, questions to the doctors and they respond basically, and you can do that anonymously as well. And we had uh, some investments from uh, Jordanian Fund for this startup. Kinotep is, uh, is, uh, is a film review startup in terms of like, uh, or booking tickets as well, like in cinemas, and you know. Uh, the, but the thing is that for that, it's not it's not uh, something unique, but it's got like uh, 100k downloads, uh, which is a good uh, like you know uh, outcome for Azerbaijan. Yeah, for startups, it's it's very hard to find investments in Azerbaijan. So I would advise to go like internationally, and we are helping these startups uh, in terms of expanding internationally. Uh, in Azerbaijan, I would say uh, the, who could be potential investors, it could be uh, government, uh, but they, it's, uh, I would not approach them personally because uh, they would require too, too many documents and they do not have anything but money 
uh, and it's it's a very small amount of fund. Uh, it's us. Uh, we invested in some startups. There was another uh, kind of seed fund as well, Infipro, but I don't know if they if they still in the work or not. For bigger investments, could be like some holdings. There is Pasha Holding, CIC, Caspian Investment Capital, whatever. Uh, some other holdings as well, who could like if they see potential in you uh, as a startup or traditional business, they might consider investing in you. But I'm not sure. Uh, and there are definitely many, many individual investors, like from friends to family um, and uh, uh, maybe some uh, other entrepreneurs who would be interested in your product and your team. Internationally, there are like so many, so many like potential from VCs uh, everywhere, like, you know, from Berlin to Silicon Valley, Tel Aviv, whatever. Um, but there are some platforms where you can find those people. It's angel.co, it's angellist, basically. You find startups and investors there, and there are some syndicates as well who can invest in you online. Uh, there, are, uh, there is LinkedIn, obviously, the LinkedIn is a professional network. You can find many investors at LinkedIn and connect them and see if, uh, if they might be interested in you. There are lots of like uh, startup conferences, hackathons, uh, like uh, events, whatever, where you can find all these people. So some of the most like famous ones are Web Summit uh, uh, in Berlin, I believe. Uh, I've, I've been to Berlin Startup Safari uh, recently, so uh, I, I found many investors there too. And there, I was also at David and Goliath conference, like, and you could see many investors there too. Uh, and obviously, if you are early stage start startup, uh, um, uh, apply for accelerators uh, in, in in different countries. In Berlin, it's uh, TechStars, Axel Springer, and Hubram. Uh, in, in in London, it's also like TechStars. Uh, then there are some others I, I can't remember. Uh, startup Bootcamp and, and some others. In the U.S., like the most uh, like in, uh, like popular and the most successful accelerator is a Y Combinator, where you can find startups like Airbnb, Dropbox, uh, came out of this startup, uh, of Accelerator. So um, it's, it's very hard to get there, but once you're there, like uh, the, the probability that you will succeed is very high. Uh, so we are trying to connect uh, Baku with uh, basically these ecosystems. Uh, it's obviously like top three uh, ecosystems, which is Silicon Valley, London, Berlin, um, and I've been, I've been to all of these uh, cities. I, I lived in London for some time, and uh, I, I've got now connections in Berlin as well. Um, but Moscow and Istanbul is, is, is an ecosystem. They are not the best ones, but uh, they are very close to our, our like, country and the city. And uh, in that sense, like, it makes sense to cooperate with these guys. So in Berlin, as I said, like, I've been to uh, I've been mentoring at uh, Startup Days, so uh, how I met these guys, and uh, uh, it's basically kind of startup weekend where you have like 50 or four hours to develop your idea, from your idea to product, which is minimum viable product we call. And you could see other among uh, investors and judges. You could see also some investors there. And uh, another one is David, David and Goliath uh, conference, which is uh, again like it's in a purely investor investment conference. So you will see uh, like uh, uh, like few startups, but you will see many potential investors. So Berlin, in that sense, is a great place to find investments, find uh, 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 your team members, and, and and just to hang out, uh, like uh, to find new opportunities, basically. And Silicon Valley, we've done like. Uh, so much we organized a tech tour to California for our investors and entrepreneurs. So this is the event we organized in Sunnyvale, which is like in the south of Bay Area, and uh, you can find like many Azeri people there, uh, Americans as well, uh, Russian speaking and Turkish speaking, speaking guys as well. And uh, it's been a very good thing. It, it, we've done it at um, in, an incubator, which is basically backed by the Turkish friends. And uh, so I, I can say that we've got an office there too. Like if, if someone is in California, they will contact us from there. So we have met many people, uh, tech companies, community, uh, like community of startups and uh, investors. And 
Uh, in the pictures you can see here, we are with the vice president of Evernote. Uh, and, um, he's vice president of intellectual property. Uh, here you can see this is a startup called Palantir. They have a valuation of now I think 20 billion or something like that. So it's it's a huge company. It's been uh, co-founded by T Peter Thiel, co-founder of uh, PayPal. And uh, uh, I actually met some of the co-workers of uh, Palantir in Azerbaijan. Uh, that's how I basically uh, uh, it been to Palantir like through their connection. So the world in that sense is very small, and startup world even smaller. Uh, we've been to Twitter. Uh, Ibrahim works as an engineer there. He's also an angel investor in, in California. Uh, he's uh, he's Turkish, and uh, he, he, we got connection to him through my parent, who worked for who actually sold his startup to Twitter. And here you can see uh, Tim Draper. He's uh, he's like his uh, his grandfather actually established one of the first uh, VCs in the world, like venture capital. They've been investors of from Intel to um, um, I don't know, like uh, uh, Tesla to Skype uh, to uh, SpaceX and many other great startups out there. So it's been a real honor to meet these guys there. So uh, uh, we soon are going to establish uh, an accelerator program in Azerbaijan, hopefully. And uh, basically, I will tell you more about what is accelerator program. It's a three to four months program where you get uh, mentors, you get uh, you get network, uh, you basically work really hard to get your product to the market, uh, you get access to resources, and our idea uh, is to have this accelerator like startups, uh, established startups, and move them basically to Silicon Valley, uh, to Berlin, to London, and many other places. And uh, I actually had a conversation with program managers of Axel Springer, and they were happy to uh, do all of this stuff with us. Um, and we are going to call it actually supas, which is like kind of a soup where you boil all these guys, and then you know, and something appears in the air. Uh, thank you so much uh, for attending the event and uh, uh, now I would like to have kind of more uh, uh, like kind of conversation wise uh, like events to go on that matter so if you have questions I would like to you know uh, to chat with you basically okay, my question. yeah why you decided to move to Berlin? Uh, I haven't moved here, but okay. uh, I'm, I'm still working like on on, on, uh, on, on many things uh, here in terms of like uh, getting partnerships and, and, and you know uh, it's it's always like good to enlarge your network in that sense. And I think that's that's going to be very beneficial for us. So Berlin, it's been seen. Uh, where did like, so where do you live now? I live in Azerbaijan. Ah, okay, so yeah. but you said that you were there in London, so I just thought that Berlin is being seen as a startup. Big, yeah. um, opportunity and so on in the other countries. Mm -hmm. Is it? I mean, that's the that's how it's people are saying here. But outside also, is that image correct? Oh yeah, definitely. I mean, uh, London. Like, I think the competitive advantage of London over Berlin is that uh, it's like it's got like enormous resources. But uh, London is a terrible place if you are an early stage uh, startup. So if you uh, like have like minimal investments, I would not recommend you to go to London. You should definitely come to Berlin in that, uh, for that matter. Okay. London is a very good place if you would like to expand to new markets. Uh, London has got like potential, like an amazing network in that sense. Especially if you are financial uh, technology or ad tech, uh, advertising technology startup, or fashion, um, and many other industries as well, where Berlin is far behind in that sense, because it, it Berlin does not have all of these industries as good and established as in London. Uh, but if you are an early stage startup, you definitely should come to Berlin. It's far cheaper. Uh, I think you, you will have more opportunities here. You will uh, you will find like uh, like uh, again like better food and climate, so you won't be super depressed uh, like you are in London. Yeah. Yeah. If you would like to connect with me, like you know, this is my email. Uh, uh,
www.azerwatch.com. So uh, uh, it's our old address, but uh, we moved to like we are going to have a new office uh, while having like this accelerator program. So yeah. So are you also interested in working together with uh, German startups? Oh yeah, definitely. Yes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Because sure. I'm in the sponsoring department of a student organization in Frankfurt. Mm -hmm. And no, it's a German, but I'm in Frankfurt. And um, we are searching sometimes, if we have some big events, we're searching for like speakers or sponsoring yep. um, firms. Yep, yep. So if we have um, um, something in yep. event in the future, are you interested? Oh, yeah, definitely. Yeah? Definitely. Okay. Yep, yep. For sure. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm traveling a lot, like I've been to maybe around 10 countries like this year and uh, I've been from India to, like, I don't know, London and Silicon Valley and many others. But mostly I'm going to countries where you have more or less like established ecosystems. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, talking about the uh, as I mentioned, that uh, so you give the funding to the, or you help yep. with funding. Is there a um, certain field of the startup that you're most interested in that you would mm -hmm. say, say you are more likely to invest? Um, I can say what we are definitely not very much interested uh, because we don't have much experience in that field. So it could be from IoT, Internet of Things, uh, to uh, I don't know, artificial intelligence, whatever, because we are very, very like uh, far, I mean, we don't know that industry yet. But uh, anything else like could be like anything that is not super high tech, that could be of our interest. And even if you don't invest, we can help in terms of getting to new investors, be it in, uh, uh, in Europe or uh, Silicon Valley or other places. And, uh, and uh, consult as well, like in terms of, uh, uh, like how basically you should market your product, uh, how where you, you need to find your clients, whatever. Like, you know, in that sense, so we help anyways to startups, be it with money or maybe other other things as well. Yeah, and and, and then one thing is that we have invested so far uh, with not much money, so we invested up to. Uh, 30k on average. Uh, so it's pre-seed seed money. So you do not invest like this huge, like 200, uh, 500 uh, millions, whatever it is like. But I, we hope we can do that in the future. So uh, basically, uh, you would then help people haven't been in the first stage. I mean, stages are yeah, being yeah. defined differently depending yeah. on the organization mm -hmm. that you're Exactly. But mostly you're sort of like trying to help those uh, starters from the first stage that people having basically first ideas and trying mm -hmm. to develop them. Or you're already, there is a product and you would oh, like I to mean, we, we, uh, from now on I can definitely say that we will never invest in ideas. Because uh, there are millions of ideas, and you know, uh, it's not worth it. And I think uh, if uh, a startup comes with the idea to you and then uh, tell you that, it's kind of a bit disrespectful in the sense that you know they they could move forward a bit in terms of like building the product and then approach the investor. Because the thing is that if you have an idea, you know, many people have ideas, yeah. But you know, have have your first like you know showcase or whatever product. So show us that you can. You can actually implement your idea into life, and it, it's not now costing much money. And you should show that you can do some sacrifice for your startup, for your idea, whatever, uh, and 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 move on with that. Uh, of course, there are some ideas or there are some products that are super difficult to implement uh, because it requires like like enormous resources. If that's the case, then yes, we can help in the in the sense that you know maybe some uh, investors uh, would would invest in from that uh, stage. For example, I'm I'm not sure if you heard of uh, Hyperloop. Basically, this is a project by Elon Musk as well, and uh, this will basically it's it's kind of a, a a loop where you have like kind of tablets uh, and people sitting there and. Uh, the distance, uh, they will cover the distance of Los Angeles to uh, San Francisco, which is 600 kilometers, mm -hmm. and they will cover that in 30 minutes. So it's a super fast, uh, like for like passengers. And obviously they can't, uh, like, you know, do it, like, you know, with their resources, they will ask for investments and they come with the idea. So, but, but that's a very different case.
Okay, maybe yeah, then we can just network and then yeah, uh, yeah and then you know uh, exchange our like, ideas. Uh, I thank you. Yeah. Thank you uh, for your the wonderful presentation and speech, and we have as we have prepared a small uh, present for you. <laughs> as if you want to buy some rooms. Thank you guys for coming and uh, I really appreciate that you've come and then uh, it was a pleasure to meet you and uh, we talked like, you know, over, over uh, some snacks. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Cheers. Thank you.